Nuclear Option incorporates many real elements into its near-future simulation, including the general behavior of missiles and aircraft in combat. This has naturally drawn down many of the terms and concepts used in the military to describe these behaviors and other events that can occur in-game. This video will review some common terms, vocabulary, and brevity codes that can get used in nuclear option and in other flight simulators. These terms are sourced from a variety of places, so they may differ somewhat from their current real-world application. Feel free to add anything I missed or got incorrect in the comments below. This video is bookmarked, so feel free to skip around as needed if you already know something or only need specific information. Effective fire. This term indicates that shots taken are connecting or require a defensive action to avoid. An aircraft is taking effective fire when it is struck or must do something to avoid being struck. Target lock. A fundamental term for the process of choosing a target for smart weapons to track. When a target is locked, it means that the pilot has selected a track or signature and sent that information to the weapon, which has calculated and returned a firing solution. In nuclear option, the quality of a firing solution is partially reflected by the ranging bar, showing the maximum, minimum, and NEZ ranges available for a given weapon. Firing Solution The set of calculations which a weapon will use to navigate to or fire upon a selected target. This includes the expected accuracy or likelihood of successful impact. Firing on a locked target without a clean or high-quality firing solution is more likely to result in a missed shot. Under ideal conditions, you want to fire on targets from inside the NEZ on the ranging bar with good target alignment to maximize your chance for a kill. Guidance Method All smart weapons will have a guidance method. This term refers to the way that a given weapon system finds its target. There are several methods available. Each weapon system will utilize at least one of them but some can use more depending on their design. There are several guidance methods available in nuclear option. Thermal guidance. Also called infrared or IR tracking, this method uses the heat generated by vehicle exhaust or radiators. These missiles are cheap, simple, and can be fired in large numbers, though they have more limited range compared to radar-guided missiles. Thermal guidance can be defeated using flares, but are immune to radar jamming. Thermal guidance is also affected by weather or natural sources of intense heat, so it becomes less effective in severe storms and can be confused by heat sources from natural things like the sun. Radar guidance. Radar guided missiles use radio signals to follow a potential target. These missiles are immune to thermal interference, so flares don't work against them, and they can see through weather interference. The only way to stop a radar-guided missile is to intercept it or block the radio signals that it uses for guidance. This can be done by jamming it, notching it, diving for terrain, or using an interceptor weapon. Radar jamming is an active countermeasure that works by creating noise on radio frequencies used by an enemy force. An individual radio frequency is a half-duplex communication channel, meaning that signals can only be sent or received. In other words, you can only speak or listen on a given channel. If two sources attempt to communicate on the same frequency at the same time, then none of the listeners on that frequency can hear anything. For missile defense, jamming works by identifying the frequency that a radar-guided missile is using and then emitting as much noise on that frequency as possible. This helps obscure the missile's target from attack, but is usually insufficient by itself. 
Radar jamming is best combined with a notching maneuver close to the ground in order to break an incoming missile lock. Notching. This is an evasive maneuver that involves turning perpendicular to an incoming missile and then diving beneath it. This forces a hostile radar to sort its target out from ground interference while simultaneously trying to lead and intercept it. This combination of factors helps obscure the defending aircraft's radar return and becomes more effective as radar cross-sections get smaller. The principle here is similar to a police speed radar. In order to get your speed, a police cruiser has to be parked so that you are moving directly towards or away from the laser or radar gun. Assume that same police cruiser is moving down the freeway, trying to sample a target crossing the overpass, and it becomes almost impossible to sort the relative speed of the target from the relative speed of the approaching bridge. Modern military radar systems are far more complex and can sift through a large amount of noise to find the signal. This means that notching does not guarantee that an inbound missile can be defeated, but it does reduce the quality of a missile's firing solution, thereby increasing the likelihood that it will miss. Additional factors, like signal jamming, or the size of an aircraft's radar return also impact the effectiveness of a notching maneuver. Stealth aircraft can more easily break an inbound missile lock than a non-stealth equivalent. Light aircraft and helicopters also have an increased chance of survival because they can maneuver much lower and move more slowly than a fast jet. Laser Guidance Laser guidance systems use an optical sensor that has been precisely tuned to specific non-visible frequencies. These weapons are not able to track a target independently, but will instead track targets that are marked by a targeting laser. Weapons using this guidance method can follow laser marks from any compatible source and use digital encoding to ensure that only allied laser systems are tracked. This allows one aircraft to fire laser-guided ordnance while another one lases the target. While not currently implemented in nuclear option, laser guidance systems can be detected by a properly equipped aircraft or vehicle, providing for a possible warning to the target. Data Link Guidance Datalink is a powerful digital battlefield awareness network that allows tactical information collected by one platform to be broadcast to all other connected devices. Using this system, targeting information for a hostile can be collected by one user and then seamlessly acted upon by another. While all piloted vehicles support two-way datalink, allowing them to send and receive information most weapon systems can only receive targeting information, regardless of their guidance method. Data link allows missiles and bombs to be fired without visual contact and still effectively track a given target, so long as another ally can see and update this information. GPS Inertial Guidance this method uses a combination of GPS coordinates and inertial acceleration sensors to determine position and the path to a fixed target. GPS guidance can be augmented by additional sensors, but this isn't required. Inertial guidance methods are impossible to jam. Even if GPS signals are blocked, inertial navigation ensures accuracy is maintained within a certain margin of error so long as the missile knows its launch position and the target location. In other words, the missile knows where it is at all times because it knows where it isn't. Combined GPS and inertial navigation enables near pinpoint precision at any range, though at the cost of being unable to track moving targets without a secondary guidance system. Brevity codes. Pilots will use specific terms to describe their actions, indicate a specific event, or issue warnings about the environment. 
known as brevity codes. These terms have been inherited from the military and are heavily used across all combat flight simulators to varying degrees. Brevity codes are always being tweaked by the military, and the gaming world can only follow behind, so these terms may not reflect their current real-world use. These are codes I have encountered or seen used in different games. Fox. Fox codes indicate the launch of an air-to-air -air weapon. This can be an allied or hostile weapon depending on the context. Allies will make this call out to warn other friendlies that their missile has been launched and is active. Likewise, allies may warn of an incoming hostile missile if they see it. FOX-1 indicates the launch of a semi-active radar-guided missile. FOX-2 indicates the launch of a thermally-guided missile. FOX-3 indicates the launch of an active radar-guided missile. Note that the designation of active FOX-3 or semi-active FOX-1 refers to the location of the radar system guiding a missile. A semi-active missile is being remotely directed by its launcher, while an active radar missile contains its own radar and can navigate independently. Wild Dog Indicates when a radar-guided missile is fired without a target lock and is expected to find one by itself. This is a dangerous missile state because there are no controls or checks on what a missile will track. It will find and follow the first thing it sees, which could be an ally or civilian aircraft. So it's only used under desperate conditions. Guns, guns, guns. Aircraft gun is being fired. While rare in real-world use, there are a lot of situations in combat sims where pilots engage targets with guns. This callout advises allies when the weapon is being fired so that ground forces expect its impact and don't instinctively return fire. Pickle Indicates the release of a gravity bomb without regard to its contents or purpose. This does not apply to the release of fuel pods or supplies. Use of this callout warns other aircraft and ground forces that an armed allied bomb is on descent. Rifle Indicates the launch of an air-to-ground rocket or missile with a range under 100 nautical miles. It is only used to indicate the attack of a ground or sea target from airborne platforms. Long Rifle The same as rifle, but indicates the launch of an aircraft cruise missile, long-range ballistic missile, or other air-to-surface munition with range over 100 nautical miles. Magnum Indicates the launch of a friendly anti-radiation missile. These weapons track radar emissions and destroy their source. This callout warns allies to check their position for possible conflict and turn off any radar equipment under their control. Laser on. Request for an ally to begin lasing a specific target. Some defensive systems can provide warning to the target that they are being lased, so it's best practice to start lasing when a related weapon is fired and stop lasing once the target is destroyed. In the real world, allies will exchange details about the laser system in advance, like laser codes or spectrum. This can happen in situ or as part of a briefing before the fight. Many combat simulators don't have this level of detail built in, but a few can have these dynamics modeled. Typically, the aircraft with a weapon to track the laser will make this request then wait for confirmation from the laser's source that the target is being lased, and then they'll fire. Lasing. The speaker is firing a laser in response to a laser on command. This is sustained until the target is destroyed or a laser off request is made. If the laser is disrupted, then the laser's source will warn the firing aircraft. Nose cold used by pilots to describe relative disposition of one aircraft to another. 
an aircraft is nose cold to any other aircraft that its nose is pointing away from. This callout does not alter the subject's disposition, whether hostile, bogey, or ally. Nose hot, used by pilots to indicate when one aircraft is pointing at another. While this can be an indicator of hostility, use of this callout does not make a subject hostile. It's important to understand this position before firing your own weapons. Bogey, used to indicate the presence of an unknown contact. Bogies are typically seen on radar from beyond visual range, but can also be called out using visual flight rules if radar isn't available. This term does not grant or imply permission to fire and does not indicate hostile intention. Bandit. A positively identified enemy aircraft which is not an imminent threat but is a factor in the current operational space. This term does not grant or imply permission to fire or indicate hostile intention. For example, an enemy AWACS unit or transport plane can be classified as a bandit even if it is known to be unarmed. Hostile a contact identified as an enemy for which clearance to fire is authorized. Any and all aircraft with engagement clearance are hostile, regardless of their intention. For example, an enemy AWACS or transport plane becomes hostile when permission is received to kill the target, even if it is known to be unarmed. The same would also be true for a hijacked airliner full of civilians after a decision is made to shoot it down. Defending Used by a pilot under attack to indicate their disposition towards the attacker. A defending pilot is generally unable to respond to the attack and is maneuvering to defeat an inbound threat. This can be from another aircraft or ground-based defenses. Splash. Derived from naval engagements during World War II, splash was originally used to mark the impact of an aircraft with the water, but has evolved to indicate a successful kill against any target on the ground or in the air. It should only be used when a kill is confirmed. AWACS. Short for Airborne Warning and Control System, this term refers to any aircraft capable of surveillance and command. There are several aircraft in service of different sizes and configurations, but they are typically equipped with a long-range radar and suite of communications or sensor equipment intended to help direct or observe a large battle space. AWACS aircraft often feature strong defensive countermeasures, but their backline role means that they are rarely armed with offensive payloads. Those are all the terms I have for today. If I missed something, be sure to correct me in the comments below. If you made it this far, you probably liked the video. Be sure to show it with a click in the right place, and I'll catch you all later.